Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay are a premium PCB manufacturer. They will produce PCBs from single-sided to multi-layer. In fact, up to 14 layers are available. And they also have a fast custom service for prototypes. So you can order prototype PCBs in a pack of 10 pieces, one to two layer for $5. And they will arrive very quickly if you pay for the express shipping or if you want to save a bit of money, you can take a cheaper option on the shipping. One of the things I really like about PCBWay, and we've looked at this several times before, and we'll have a look again, is the shared project section. So once you have ordered your prototypes, you have your device working, if you wish, you can then upload the Gerber files, the bill of materials, the schematics to PCBWay. And if anybody wants to build that project, then you will get a commission on the sales of all the PCBs. You can also link to your blog or to your YouTube channel if you have one, or social media, anywhere you would like to advertise your device. This is a great way for amateurs to produce PCBs, offer them for sale without having to actually go to the expense of holding stock of PCBs and handling postage and the other various problems involved. So you can really effectively publish anything on here and it will give you a great idea of how the community see your device, what they think of it, feedback, any problems. So it really is the best way to publish projects if you would like to make some money from them without having to invest the money yourself. In the shared projects, there's lots of sections. And of course, I've been looking at the various projects for test equipment, anything to do with electronic repair. Later, I will show you how to order some prototype PCBs for the project we're working on now, and then we can create a project on here. I will show you how to do it. It's very, very easy with PCB way. But first, let's have a look around at the projects that are available and see if there are any projects for a signal injector, which is what I would like to build. So I will view all the categories and then I will search. So let's search for signal injector and see if we have anything here. Well, in fact, there are zero results. We can just look for a uh, signal tracer. Maybe they have what we're looking for with a different name. Signal tracer. No, again, there are not. So there are no projects on PCB way at the moment for a signal tracer or a signal injector. So let's design our own. Let's build a prototype and if it's working, then in the next video, we will create the PCB layout and we will order the prototypes. Okay, let's begin. This is the PCB way signal tracer pen that we built a couple of videos ago. And this just connects to amplified speakers, the little ones you get with a PC, or maybe if you're just plugging into a phone, but not Bluetooth ones. So you just effectively connect this to the jack connector on the speakers and this works very very well as a signal tracer but i did say at the end of that video that i would build a signal injector and i also commented that i have another pcb way pen which has run out of ink so it's a little bit damaged this one but it'll work for this experiment i'm sure so let's see if we can build a signal injector into this pen the project I'm going to use for this is one I found on the internet again. And this basically is a little multi-vibrator as the circuit's called. It uses two transistors and it generates a square wave at around one kilohertz. This was one of the first circuits I actually built when I was just a teenager and a young one at that and started to play with electronics and started my journey with electronics. You can see this runs off a one and a half volt battery, but actually the circuit will work on higher voltages than that. This is the circuit and it's obviously been copied from somewhere. You see the low resolution 
schematic and these guys were being quite clever because they actually built this into a tic tac box a little tic tac box but i want to go one better and i actually want to build this into a pen so let's see if we can do it so here is the schematic it's very simple we need two npn transistors it's not particularly important what type we use we need some resistors and capacitors i'll just put the values in here so this is 150k now normally these two resistors would be the same value but for the circuit i have they're using 150k and 220k so this would not give an even duty cycle but let's build it like this and let's see what we get these are 22k resistors 10 nanofarads so i'm going to build the prototype on variable then we can get a pcb made and upload it to pcb way now of course we want to get this thing to actually fit into a pen and if you look that we can only get effectively three tracks wide to go down inside there and we need a little bit more to build this can you imagine this will be one track this level could all be on another track with various cuts in where we need it the base would be another track and then this would be four so we need four but we can't get them in there the other thing is because the space in here it's going to be much easier to use surface mount components so can we build a surface mount circuit onto veriboard well yeah actually we can so let's see how we're going to do it here is our little bit of vero board and this is small enough to fit inside the pen so the first thing i'm going to do is to cut with my dremel across the middle of each track this one when i cut the thing off kind of went astray a little bit but i actually only need effectively five tracks so we'll probably leave this one alone i'll just cut down the middle of the other two for the transistors i'm going to use 1am it's a very common so 23 transistor i have lots of salvage ones so this will be absolutely fine for our project so if we take one of the transistors we can have a look to see how these are going to fit on our board so there is a transistor now the connections on it effectively as we can see this is the base this is the collector and this is the emitter i think i'll end up mounting them this way around and you'll see quite nicely once we've cut this track in half they will span half of it and then we can put our surface mount resistor from here to here again from here to here or across the two tracks i think that's the most likely so there to there there to there and we can get our capacitor in in fact it may well end up then that our transistor actually ends up in that position yeah so let's cut the tracks and let's start figuring out how we're going to put this together there is our vero board i've just cut down the tracks in the middle so we now have one two three four five conductor rails if you like so we need to fit a resistor from here to here one from here to here and then sitting in between them is going to be the surface mount capacitor for the first transistor and then again the same for the second one and we can get our transistors on so let's put the resistors on here first and just figure out where we're actually going to cut these tracks you can see we have the 22k resistor which goes to the collector of the transistor one end of the capacitor so i need to cut the track underneath the capacitor then we have the other end of the capacitor going to the 150k back to power so this is your vcc okay and we can cut the track here between the base and the emitter the emitter we can actually then connect down to here so this will be your zero volts and then we build exactly the same circuit again here the only difference being we have the 220k resistor again the same cuts one in between the two circuits there one underneath the capacitor and the same again between the base and the emitter 
and the emitter can come down to here. All we then have to do is connect a wire from the base to the junction of the high value resistor and capacitor on the opposite side. So one can come over to here, and the other one can go over to there. Probably easy just to use a little bit of enameled wire for that to be quite honest. And then we've built the circuit. So I'll solder that together. I'll put the cuts in the board, obviously. And now let's see if it works. It's mostly assembled now. So this is going to be the power supply. Probably 5 volts, 9 volts or something. This circuit will run on a whole range of voltage. So this is the collector resistor, the capacitor and the base resistor. Then we have a cut here. There's a cut underneath the capacitor. The same here. So this is the collector resistor, the capacitor and the base resistor. And this is the output capacitor. So this one, excuse me, I moved it a little bit too much. So this one goes from the collector to out. So this capacitor is actually soldered to the track which runs under there that I'm not using. The collectors are on the tracks above. So anywhere on this track here, I can take the output to the probe. We need to add a wire from here to here. And again, from here to here, this will then be the ground and the clip, the ground clip, the naught volt supply. And then we need to connect the wire from the base here to this resistor and from this base here to this one so i'll put those wires in and then really it's ready to try let's just take a closer look at this before we test it in case you want to try to make one of these so you can see as i did i cut through the track of the variable across the holes there and also here okay so the top track is just intact and that is your pulse volts you can see the Resistors 22k, 220k, 150k, 22k. And if you look, 22k comes down to a capacitor. So the track here is cut under the capacitor across to the 154k. And then we cut the track. 224k through the capacitor with the track cut underneath. And then the 223k. You can see where the collector is soldered there. And also there. And then we have the base and the emitter and the track is cut in between the two. You can see there actually where the track's been cut by the base. And the same on this one. The emitter's just come down to this track. This is zero volts. You can see the stiff wire goes underneath the white one there, that one there. And then the base of this one, this is enameled wire, goes through the hole and it actually comes out there. You can hardly see it, but it actually comes out through this hole, I think you can just see now the edge of it. That's soldered to the end of the capacitor. And the same with this one, from the base, through a hole on the board, around the back, through the hole again, and soldered to this capacitor. So that's the circuit. This last capacitor, I could have actually just connected to the wire down towards the probe, which we're going to fit, but it's on the board now. So from this point the output the collector of this transistor and that goes to this track which is running under the transistors but isn't connected to anything so where that bit of solder is there that's going to be the output and we can also attach our ground clip to here so that's it let's actually power this up and let's see if it's working here we have the oscilloscope our little pcb the output is out on this track as i mentioned it runs across here and yeah you can see quite clearly it is oscillating it's a kind of squarish wave but that's fine so it is actually working now that's where the power supply on six volts so let's try reducing it down to three volts okay a three volt supply now is it still running yeah, just with a reduced amplitude. I just want to see if this actually runs as far as 1.5 volts, so that gives us a good idea of what type of battery we can use with it. Okay, 1.5 volts dialed in. Is it still running? Yeah. So we can run this quite happily off a 1.5 volt battery, and I'm hoping we can find something that's small enough to fit down here. 
but it also was running fine at 6 volts as well so we have a little bit of discretion on the type of battery voltage that we actually use and the type of battery that we're using here the PCB fits absolutely perfectly fine inside here so now I need to attach the probe and I'd like to put a button on this so we can just touch the button to activate the little unit yeah and I'll put that into the power lead so the idea being that when you don't press the button it's drawing no power from the battery I've taken the end off an old broken multimeter probe again this is a little bit of screened wire just to stop any stray pickup really although I haven't connected the screen at this end it will connect at the other end so I've also chopped off the end of the pen and this will now fit here so I can glue that in place with a bit of hot milk glue that's glued into there then so what I can do is now I can actually mount the PCB onto the back of here it's not quite narrow enough to go in or just about insert into there so if I cut off this shielded cable I can connect the output I can also connect the shield to the ground and then I can actually use again a bit of hot melt glue and just hold this in place and then the back piece will screw over there yeah with the battery in and the switch getting the switch is going to be the fun part I think there we have it so we have the tip just glued on there a little bit messy but this is a prototype after all can soon clean that bit of glue up and I've attached the PCB here shame it wouldn't just quite fit down there a little bit it's stuck on with hot melt glue again but that shouldn't cause a problem putting this cover on so the cover will go over this the wire was a little bit thick the shielded wire but it's soldered down well all this bottom track and in fact the end of the transistor same as this one on the track above is all ground so it's not a problem if it touches over there but in fact the pink wire comes underneath over the transistor I couldn't solder it directly to the board it was too thick so I've taken a bit of a resistor leg but this is very stiff this won't bend easily so it won't bend downwards easily once we put the cover over here that that will protect that anyway this will screw on here so that's all that ready so it's just a matter of now of figuring out how to fit the battery into the top part of the pen and that'll depend on what type of battery we use what i can do is just test it so yeah it is oscillating there's a little bit of instability in the frequency but really that isn't going to be a problem if we just want to inject a signal see if it's getting in there i have it at the moment set up three volt supply and it's actually runs really about 400 hertz i've noticed so to get a one kilohertz does it actually change with the power let me see i'm interested so i'll up the power to six volts no it's still about 400 but it's now stable so it seems to prefer in actual fact a higher voltage supply i'll take it down to 1.5 volts okay yeah 1.7 it is nearly so it's definitely running so we can definitely use this to inject signals let's inject it into our signal tracer that we built and see how it sounds this is the pcb weight signal tracer then this is the signal injector okay we have a sound you can hear that slight instability in it yeah but it is working so we can use this to inject a signal as i say as a prototype i'm sure this is fine so now we need to just figure out if we can get this on and sort the battery as yes you can see we can take the top of the pen i just have the wire sticking out the end at the moment and this will now yeah screw over there fine so that's the injector pen together right let me go see what sort of batteries i can find and if i can actually build the battery into here with a little button to switch it on and off i have the other part of the pcb way pen so this is where i'm actually going to fit the button i'm going to try and get it into here somewhere so i think i'll drill a hole and then we'll try and slide this inside 
I may have to cut the plastic down slightly to do it. I have some shorter ones, but they're probably too short. So that can go inside there. I have some of these uh, little alkaline cells, so we'll try one of these. These are small enough to fit inside the pen. But I think probably I'll try to attach this so it's just behind the PCB. I can't find any battery holders for these. Um, I think I could probably fabricate something out of a, a little spring equip when we make a PCB for this. But for now, I'll either just try and stick something around it or even try to solder to it, although that's not the best idea with little alkaline cells. But let's see what we can do with it for the prototype. So the next thing is to see if I can actually get the button inside the case. So I'll drill a hole here, the right size, and let's see if it's possible to do it. I had a little think about it. So this is off an old uh, meter lead, but I'll put a crocodile clip on this end. So I've put the wire through here. I've drilled a hole so I can pull the wire up inside here, okay? On the little injector, I've soldered a little bit of Vero board, so I can now take my battery, positive end down, that's the positive supply, and I can take another bit of Vero board with a bit of wire, and literally sit it on top of there, and then just wrap some insulation tape around it, that will do for the prototype, okay? So, the positive end of the battery will be permanently connected to the device, the negative end will go up this wire and here we will put the switch so the negative end of the battery comes into the switch the other side of the switch goes back to the PCB on the negative end so that applies the power we're actually connecting the negative end when we press the button and we can also attach our probe here as well so that when we press the button it attaches the ground probe it attaches the negative supply to the injector if we do it this way then even if you accidentally short the clip to the uh, probe when it's not switched on without the button being pressed it won't drain the battery okay so i have it soldered just waiting for the battery to go in obviously we need to turn that around but not a problem so hopefully now I can use this black wire to pull the switch up inside here and get the switch into the hole. Uh, this will be a bit of fun, but let's have a go and see. Let's see if I can do it on camera first, otherwise I'll just fiddle around with it for a while. But let's see if we can actually do it like this. So we know it's going to go in that way. Uh, and now it's about to pull the switch in until we can see it. Hopefully I've made this long enough. Only just. Okay, so I see the first problem. I need to put the battery in first. I, I've not made this long enough. I think I shall take it back out actually and just extend that wire a little bit. Let's try again with a longer wire. I'll just attach it to the switch. Okay, I think that's got it. Looking good. We can just make sure we have continuity before we put this together. Always a, the best time to do it. Yeah. Always the best time before you've put it together. Okay. You'll hear it. Okay. So from the battery terminals to the other side of the switch. Just drop it on there. Press the button. Yeah, I just don't have a good contact. I've just rested the probe on it, but... We need three hands, guys. Three hands required. Okay, bit of effort, I have it. But I have continuity. I failed to grow an extra limb. You'd think the electronics uh, guys would have evolved an extra limb by now. Okay, so that's there. This should all fit inside. So once again, face the switch in the direction I want it. Okay. And pull it into the body. Let's see if it will go. And hopefully I can get some glue down here if it fits. So I can see I have a switch there. It's in position. Okay. 
so whether now we can actually push it in through the hole let's see stick something sharp down the end of it close I think I might have it. Yeah, got it. I have it there. I can operate the switch, but I need something to hold that in place. So this is where we're going to have to get some glue on the end of this and stick it down here. But definitely the switch is there. And I can activate it. Yeah just need some glue it took uh, two or three attempts and there's a little bit of glue in here but I'm pretty sure I'll get it to go together this is where it was broken anyway so we have the switch there I have one crocodile clip connected to the negative battery terminal the other one is connected to the um, the ground clip then we can press the button and we have continuity so we can now put our battery between the two little bits of vero board put a little bit of insulation tape around it and this should then work there's nothing very high tech about this guys but this is a prototype so the battery this is the positive it's a 1.5 volt cell that's fine so we can literally sit the battery onto here and we can just sandwich it between the two bits of board okay so battery battery yeah that'll fit in like so and a little bit of insulation tape will just hold the whole thing in place let's give it a go so battery battery obviously for the uh, PCB version I'll probably make a little uh, integrated battery holder effectively like a little clip on the PCB that the battery slides under but this will do for now let's see if we can get it to go together okay of course on camera this is all three times more difficult than normal In the end, it was just too fiddly. I couldn't get that to work. I'm sure we can come up with a better method than this one. But for now, with the prototype, I'm gonna do, the, do it the bad way, yeah? As long as you get a bit of flux on there, and I've sort of scratched at the surface with a Stanley knife, this should solder very quickly. Let's see if it actually will. Yeah, I have some solder right? and that was fast, yeah. That's the main thing, I was fast. Okay, so we'll remove our little bits of uh, Vero board, which are not gonna do the job this time. We can attach the negative lead. Again, just come in very quickly. Probably put a little bit extra flux, actually that will help. I guess prototyping, anything goes sometimes. But this is not a good way to do it, right, guys? In fact, I'm going to make that end of that wire a little bit shorter so it can't short the battery out. I do have the spot welder, but I've loaned it to Carlos, otherwise, we could have used spot welder to put this on, that would be better. Okay. It's on. So that's the negative lead attached. I let the battery just cool down a little moment or five. And turn it round. Then we can get the other bit of Vero board off. Okay. A little bit of flux. But before I put the flux, again I'm just going to scrape a little bit at the top of the battery. Just a bit of clean metal, it helps. You'll find it tins much easier then. So you see we have scraped it. Bit of flux. Leaded solder. Just get a bit on the iron. 
hopefully that will just yeah it's tender you can see where it's stuck to it where I scraped it it took the solder yeah you're not getting a huge amount of heat into them this way but it's not I'll say again it's not the most clever way to do it okay so I've cooled down and then we'll put the wire on We can push this all back up inside here. No problem, that's where it's going to go when we put this together. Okay. It's cold. Get a little bit of flux. We'll put the wire on. If you can hear any sound behind me, by the way, it's Sunday morning and the, uh, the happy clappers are at it. They have a church just actually in the centre. It restrains a lot because like, they do nothing all week and then on Sunday they're here all day. Yeah, different lots. Strange. <laughs> but the rest of the week they don't do anything. Okay. So we have our battery soldered. We can actually test this before we put a bit of tape on it. So if I measure from the positive of the battery to the ground wire coming in, and I press the button, I should get three volts, what's like 1.5 volts. So I've like uh, so positive of the battery to the ground connection on my little PCB hold it like so they should read zero because the switch is off if I can push the switch with my finger I can I now have 1.5 volts so this is working I'll put a bit of tape on it let's connect the speakers or rather the uh, probe to it and we should be able to hear the sound you can see that white was so fiddly with the insulation tape I couldn't do it previously will not go down through the hole you see what the problem was you see it just doesn't want to go Okay. Little bit of little bit of persuasion. Here's the PCB way signal tracer there and the signal injector. So let's see. Yeah, without fingers. So it's definitely working. Now let's see if I can get it all together. And yes, just about I can. So, just needs one a little addition. <laughs> you know what's coming, don't you guys? It's the right colour though, yeah, it's the right colour. And bear in mind, this is the prototype, yeah, so things are always a little bit uh, hit and miss. Okay. The problem was the glue I put down the end to hold the button by the way. Without the glue it wouldn't have been a problem. That's where the trouble started. Okay. Okay, yeah, working. One PCB way signal injector pen with on off button. Yeah, easy to press too. Okay, so there we have it. It is in a pen as I promised, just about. One signal injector pen with on off button. Courtesy 
of PCB way. There we have it, one signal injector, one signal tracer, both in PCB way pens. As I said at the beginning, in the next video, we will design the PCB from the schematic to fit inside here, integrate hopefully the button and the battery holder so I don't have the same problem I had this way. I will ask PCB way if I can have some more pens, please. And let's make this really nice, yeah? Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you find these useful if you decide to build some yourself in your own pens. And I will see you all soon on another Lady Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.